Hello, and welcome to the Regional Health Report. I'm Ann Krebs. This monthly program highlights the world-class health care and services provided at our military treatment facilities, dental clinics, and public health units to soldiers, their families, retirees, and other beneficiaries. When it comes to workplace safety, this region cuts no corners. Several of our facilities have been awarded the Army Safety and Health Management System Award, also known as the Army Safety Star. U.S. Army Medical Activity at Fort Drum, New York is the latest to earn the award. Earning the star is a journey. There are four safety pillars to consider, with 243 elements for each of the three stages. It normally takes an organization three years to achieve. When you get that safety and occupational health star status, it means that you are doing safety the best that you possibly can. In a healthcare setting, the safety star demonstrates a culture in which the employees, patients, and visitors are protected against avoidable accidents through total employee focus. The biggest thing is, is you know, you can easily say that safety is a priority. That's a, that's a quick buzzword, but it's got to be a culture. It's got to be embedded in, in what you do as opposed to what you just throw out there as a, as a bumper sticker. And, and so I think that's what this organization has done. That focus and commitment includes investments in safety technology like the power load system for emergency medical personnel safety. You always have to put safety at the forefront. The term safety first is not really a really good term to use, although I put it in my slogan, because if you truly don't put safety first, then you can't say that, but you always have to at least put it in the forefront. And it doesn't matter if you're at work, you're at home, uh, you're out on a trip somewhere, you have to always think, what are my risks? What can I do to mitigate the risks? And if you incorporate that into your daily routine, the chances of you having something serious happen lessens. An emphasis on safety by the Fort Drum Medic leadership and teamwork by assistant safety officers and all staff members is making Fort Drum clinics safer. For the Regional Health Report, I'm Jerome Banks. Fort Drum is the seventh medical organization within our region to earn the Army Safety Star. It's a common occurrence in clinics around the world. The provider says, where does it hurt? And the patient says, it's my right arm or some other location on the body. The provider makes a note and it goes into the treatment record. But what happens next? Medical coders translate the doctor's notes into codes that stand for diagnosis or treatments received. Last October, the International Classification of Diseases 10th Edition, or ICD-10, replaced the 40-year-old ICD-9 in facilities throughout the United States. The new system features more than 50,000 new codes for more detailed diagnostic coding and procedure reporting. Tobacco use used to be 305.1, but then you crosswalk that to ICD-10, but now it's, did the patient use to what type of tobacco product did they use? Did they use chewing tobacco? Did they use cigarettes? You know, so you really have to, you know, break it down. So it might be one code going to 10 codes. The new code set is helping our medical facilities keep up with new diseases with greater accuracy. Regional military treatment facilities use the opportunity to enhance the quality of coding using the more comprehensive system. We started with uh, incorporating ICD-10 in uh, our coding, regional coding contract, where we actually had trainers that uh, you know, provided on-site and also remote training. Uh, and our training was kind of different because we were uh, focused on training you know, physicians, um, on you know, clinical staff, and also the administrator, uh, administrative uh, staff, such as the third-party billers, uh, making sure that everyone was aware of what ICD-10 was. Uh, an expectation for uh, you know, what we were supposed to do going forward with ICD-10. Local coders then train their facility health care providers on how to use the system. We really had to make sure that um, we went through all the templates for the different clinics to make sure that they were having the documentation that they needed. Um, we, I worked with IMD, um, our clinical system trainers, to go through all of the um, templates, all of their um, favorites that they have for their coding. We crosswalked them from ICD-9 to ICD-10. Um, we verified them with our DOD guidelines because some of them, um, they have specific codes that they have to use. So we made sure that, you know, we were giving them the correct codes and that way when October 1st hit, they were able to be able to use the correct codes. The higher level detail ICD-10 offers 
gives providers better tools to analyze illness and injuries. That can lead to better prevention and improved readiness. Reporting for the Regional Health Report, I'm Ronald Harris. Elsewhere around the region, we salute two outstanding soldiers, one who continues to make a difference at Fort Knox, Kentucky, and another who left a lasting mark on Fort Bragg, North Carolina. First, Staff Sergeant Brittany England was recently recognized for her outstanding work as the Ireland Army Community Hospital's victim advocate. England created the very first sexual harassment and assault response and prevention program for Fort Knox senior leaders. And finally, congratulations to Brigadier General Ronald Stevens. The former Womack Army Medical Center commander returned to Fort Bragg, North Carolina recently to receive his star. Stevens is now Deputy Commanding General of the Regional Health Command Pacific. And that's the Regional Health Report for June. Join us next month for another show highlighting health care across the region. In the meantime, don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube. Thanks for joining us.